Good evening and welcome to The Big Fight, a show that is young at 21, the oldest running debate show on Indian news television. I'm Sanket Upadhyay. There is a global debate, in fact many would argue it's gone way beyond a debate, uh, around the world where countries are now deeply polarized around two words and I'm going to come to those two words in just a short moment. At the very beginning we want to say that whatever your grievance may be, whatever may be upsetting you or has offended you, the answer to that and the justification for that cannot be terrorism. You cannot, you cannot justify terrorism. So if beheadings are happening in France and there are certain nations that are either complicit in their silence or are openly supporting violence, then this is wrong and this has to be spoken about very, very clearly. Similarly, on the other side, on the other side most of the Islamic nations feel that France by virtue of certain actions that it has taken or no action that it is taking against how religious sentiments are being hurt is indulging in Islamophobia and that too by promoting these, uh, these acts is indulging in Islamophobia. So this entire debate around the world has revolved now around these two words Islamophobia and Islamofascism. So on the big fight tonight, Islamic backlash against France India, remember, has taken an unprecedented position uh, in favor of France. We've never done this in the past, but we've done it now. New Delhi has openly backed Macron, calling the personal attacks on him deplorable, quote-unquote deplorable. But then we also have to speak about the duplicity. Many people argue that there is a duplicity in the argument of Islamic countries. They're united against France's reforms, but silent on China's Muslim persecution. Why? And also, attack on the Prophet caricature in France, but completely silent on Prophet depiction on China's CCTV. Again, why? So on the big fight tonight, Islamic backlash against France, Islamophobia versus Islamofascism, and most important, decoding India's changed position. What does this changed position of New Delhi actually mean? Let me introduce our guest this evening, We've got Brahma Chelani, strategic affairs expert, joining us. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chelani. Dr. Wail Awad is a senior international journalist, is also with us. Thank you very much, Mr. Awad. Ambassador Gurjeet Singh, former ambassador to Germany, has also served as an ambassador to Indonesia. Thank you very much, Ambassador Singh. Sunny Hundal, uh, British journalist and writer, joins us uh, from London. Uh, and Lalita Kumara Mangalam, director of the India Foundation and member of the BJP is also with us. The format of the show, very, very simple. All of you guests get one minute of time. We call this the first punch. Brahma Chelani, Dr. Chelani, we'll begin with you. Your opening comments. The Islamist calls for boycott of uh, French goods contrast with the muted response to China's assault on Islam. France is not going and attacking Islam. What Macron and the French government are doing, they are spotlighting the role of violent jihadism. They're, target, they're targeting violent jihadists in France. And yet, the reaction of some countries like Turkey and Qatar in particular against France contrast with the muted response to China's open campaign against Islam. China, as you know, has established a Muslim gulag, which has more than a million detainees. It's uh, systematically trying to deprogram Islamic identities in Xinjiang. And yet, the right. reaction from the Muslim world has been so muted. And Macron is not alone in right. spotlighting the role of radical Islam. Trump has repeatedly cited the threat from radical okay, Islam. Okay, Dr. Chilani, I'm going to come back to you so that you can complete your threat. argument. Dr. Ch correct, correct. Dr. Chilani, I'm going to come back to you. Uh, uh, we're giving one minute time for the opening comments, so we're going to quickly come back to you and you can complete the thought. Uh, Dr. Wail Awad and Ambassador Gurjeet Singh are also with us and I believe Dr. Uh, Lalita Kumara Mangalam is also with us. Thank you very much, Ms. Kumara Mangalam. Uh, Ambassador Gurjeet Singh, uh, one minute for your opening comments. Your time begins now, sir. Thank you. 
I think uh, the question that you posed is best answered if you look at things strategically rather than on, e on any consistency or moral standpoint. So I don't think uh, Turkey uh, or Pakistan or even Mahathir Mohammed is standing up for Islamic countries or Islamic Ummah in general. They are standing up to fight against what Turkey perceives to be a country which is troublesome to it, which is France. So it is the Turkey-France contradiction which is coming into play and Pakistan is simply supporting Turkey and Mahathir is also supporting them on this idea that we are all one. So I don't think it is really the Islamic Ummah led by OIC or Saudi Arabia or UAE who have been fairly muted in their uh, criticism. So I think the answer is in the strategic construct around this, which is also factored in by France's own domestic contradictions, which I'm sure we'll discuss today. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, Ambassador Singh, thank you so much uh, for your opening comments. Uh, let me now go across to Lalita Kumaramangalam. Yes, Ms. Kumaramangalam. These words, Islamophobia and Islamofascism, they're terms, and I, I don't really deal in terms. But the fact is that there can be no excuse for murder or for any form of terror. If that terror is based on a religion and is and it, people claim, people belonging to that particular religion claim that their religion uh, actually permits that, then it is wrong, regardless of what religion one may belong to. Insofar as India's reaction to uh, what has happened in France over the last few days, and I think the French government, especially the French prime minister's response, very tough response to it, I think we are also coming from where we ourselves stand, that, uh, that uh, no community can hold, uh, um, you know, uh, can, can justify murder as uh, a, a form of protest. Now, uh, what has happened in France is that they say they were upset over certain cartoons, but that doesn't mean you slit people's throat or blow up churches or any form of terror or any form of you know murder, which it actually is, can be allowed. Right. So, uh, according to me, it's as simple as this. The rest of it okay. are terms which are okay. used in in the world. You know, sometimes sure, I don't know sure. why we use such terms, but uh, I think this is what the crux of the matter is. Sure. Okay, okay. I'm going to come back to you, Ms. Kumaramangalam. Uh, let me now go to Dr. Awad. Dr. Awad, uh, the first punch, your opening comments for one minute. Your time starts now. Thank you, Sanket. I think what happened in France is a condemnable. It's a terrorist act, and I condemn it by all, my wholeheartedly, and my heartfelt condolences to the family of the bereaved. Similarly to the same two uh, Algerian women, Muslim women, who have been stabbed by a French in retaliation for what's happening there. So therefore, the, uh, this is a condemnable act and no religion can call for any kind of uh, this killing. That is what religion is meant, oneness of a human being. But the issue here is it a freedom of speech for a president of, of, uh, of France to encourage the, the depictions of the prophet when there is already uh, the court of the European court have said they, that this despising the religious figure by any uh, more by any means is not a uh, related to the freedom of speech so what what president france have done he had add oil to the fire and he had created the hatred discourse that have led to this so therefore i say there is both sides are uh, guilty of the first degree murder of humanity all humans should condemn what happened all humans should condemn what okay. extremism and radicalism happened sure All right, Dr. Rawa, thank you so much. Uh, Sunny Hundal, uh, we come to you now, uh, the first punch. You have one minute of opening comments. Your time begins now. Good evening. Well, I stand against religious extremism on all sides, but I do think there is hypocrisy on the side over here too. And so there are three aspects of the French Republic which are relevant here. Firstly, the separation between religion and state, equality of all people, regardless of religion, and the freedom to insult. Now, would the BJP go along with any of these ideals? No. In France, they would be seen as the French party. So the same. So you know, the same standards I think should apply to France, to India, and to these Islamic states. Now, there's no doubt that the Muslim majority countries like uh, Turkey and Pakistan are big hypocrites in all this. But I don't think India has a leg to stand on either. And I don't think Europe is taking any lessons from India, given the 
coverage over there of Muslims being lynched for allegedly eating beef or, uh, you know, the Babri Masjid situation or the riots in Delhi uh, earlier this year. So all of these issues are being seen across the world. So no one is going to okay, say, there is a difference, well, no, Mr. Undal. Uh, as, as far as the as far as the court delivered verdict is concerned, is all right. We have run out. Of, yes, yes. Uh, uh, you've completed your one minute time. I just wanted to say there is a veil of a difference between uh, a court judgment and public beheading, right? So these are two totally different things, Mr. Undal. I'm going to come back to you very quickly. Uh, let's uh, kickstart this discussion, Dr. Chelani. Uh, sorry to have cut you short. Uh, would you want to conclude or complete the argument that you were making? The two points that I want to make that uh, India's response to what's happened in France is not unprecedented because uh, radical Islamist terrorism presents a mortal threat to all democracies and India has in the past been prompt in condemning acts of terror, whether in the United States or elsewhere. The second point I wish to make is that the article. No, but Dr. Chalani, India has not just condemned acts of terrorism. India has also called personal attacks on Macron deplorable. It's, it's, it's in that context that I'm saying that this is unprecedented. No, Sanket, you're right. To defend but a world you, leader. You have to keep in mind that the attacks on Macron have been unprecedented. He has been called not civilized human being. He's been called all sorts of names. You have not had this kind of situation earlier. So in this situation, the Indian government has rightly condemned attacks on Macron's character. The second point that, that, that one has to bear in mind is that radical Islamist terrorism has ideological roots. And those ideological roots can be traced back to Wahhabism which legitimizes violent jihad with its call for a war on infidels. The troubling part is that Wahhabism has been snuffing out the diverse, more liberal Islamic traditions in non-Arab countries. And this is creating a toxic environment in which extremism is thriving. Mm -hmm. Wahhabism has also incited anti-Shia attacks in countries like Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, etc. So Wahhabism is, is posing a threat to democratic traditions, but also creating attacks even mm -hmm. on Muslims, like the, like the minorities uh, in, in, in Islamic countries, the Shias, the Ahmadiyyats, etc. Okay, okay, uh, okay. Uh, Ambassador Gurjeet Singh, let me come to you. Do you think, Ambassador Singh, that this is some form of correction happening in France, uh, uh, at least politically for their own domestic consumption, where uh, a free society, a liberal society, which welcomed people from all over the world for many, many decades, has now suddenly realized or, or seems to realize that uh, its land is being used... Uh, you know, to to basically assert global terrorism. At least that's the argument that is coming in from uh, from France as a justification for these measures. I'm talking in the context of these this this new proposed law. Well, I don't have a justification, but let me attempt an explanation. So, what you have sure. and what your screen is showing, you know, that France is law on abhorring separatism of Muslims in France wants to bring them more into French society. That seems to be the aim, which means, but how are they doing it? They are saying that no imam will be trained overseas. If you need state subsidy, you have to sign a declaration that you will hold the laws of the Republic higher than the laws of your religion. And all small children will not be homeschooled, but will need to go to school. Now, you, uh, your funding will also be controlled from Correct. overseas. And it's the French Islamic 
association which will govern all Islamic issues. Okay, so this is the plan that you have, which President Macron announces on 2nd October, well before two major incidents of terrorism take place. But having said that, 74% of Muslim youth in France believe that they hold Islamic values higher than those of the French Republic. So you have a very clear cleavage between what you are attempting to do on what the people evidently yeah. want. Now, some of the more left-wing members of parliament in France are saying that President Macron is chasing the wrong cleavage. He should look at a cleavage between the rich and the poor mm. and try and reduce those gaps through a better performing mm. economy and public service. But he has chosen to go the cleavage between mm. Islam and others in France, largely because his party is not doing well in French polls over recent weeks. He is the one European mm. leader whose ratings have mm. not risen in the pandemic. So he needs to find some way of doing this. And he seems to have chosen this kind of integration. The second issue here is the entire challenge mm. of immigration. Mm. Now, for years, we have been told that France integrates its overseas people best. But over a series of rioting that we have seen in France, unconnected to Islam, it is the rich-poor divide which has actually come out more. And the integration of people from the sure. former colonies has not been the best in France. Thirdly, even other people in other European okay. countries say that certain restrictions on liberty and freedom of expression have been accepted by all. For instance, in the Netherlands, mm. there is no freedom of expression in criticizing the monarch. And that is accepted in a democratic society. So why mm. are absolute values being mm. sought in France today? But at the same time, when you have the new lockdown from today... Sure, but the many would argue that's Netherlands exactly how the French society has been, or this is how they want to be. It also has to do with Mr. Macron's and positioning. And right. That you find acceptable. But by freedom of expression, you want to hold it an absolute truth. I think those are the contradictions in France. A absolutely. Those are the contradictions that a lot of people around the world are speaking about in the context of the French society. But many in France will argue this is how we are. We, we, this is what we call being liberal and being secular. Anyway, uh, Dr. Dr. Awad, I want to quickly come back to you on this point of Islamophobia versus Islamofascism. Now, a lot of commentators also seem to suggest that there are questions on the duplicity of Islamic nations. And if you could just hear me out before you reply. So you've got Turkey and Pakistan who are silent on Muslim persecution by China. There is no outrage over persecution of Uyghur Muslims. Beheadings for depiction of Prophet Muhammad as cartoon take place in France, but there is no outrage over Prophet depiction in a period drama on China's CCTV network. Would you would you want to respond to this? Look, uh, Turkey does not represent Islam nor Pakistan. So let's make it very clear. The practice of religion is different from sure. the political Islam, which they have been trying to involve and indulge in gaining the... The, you know, the gaining momentum because these are a, these are a promoter of extremism, and extremism is based on the actually the ignorance and the mobilization. So what they are doing is they are the, what Turkish president is doing. He is the first hand murder of what he did in my country and Iraq. Everybody knows what he has done from zero tolerance with neighbors to zero problem with all the neighbors. He is expanding his hand into the Mediterranean Sea, gone to Libya, he's gone to Syria, he's gone to Iraq, he's gone everywhere. So I think what we have seen in what he is doing is doing wrong. They don't represent Islam. Secondly, which is very important here, I fully agree what Professor Abraham Chidani was saying. It is exactly the same that there are ghettos within this society where there are a group of minorities who are unable to integrate into the society. France have the second largest population of Muslim. I mean, the second religion is Muslim in France. So Muslim community is very strong, but there are ghettos mm. where they allowed mm. the Saudis madrasas and mosques to be built there and teaching the takfiri, Wahhabi, jihadist group. <laughs> Why none of the European 
have been silenced on when the jihadists came to my country, Syria, and destroy and destabilize Syria and Iraq, and now they are refusing to take them back. So Europe and ex exactly France must admit that there is indigenous terrorists within their country, within their society. They need to deal with it. It's not that mm. it is only exporting mm. from us. There is, a, there is a terrorism inside. So Turkey is taking full advantage of this. Sure. He's riding on the Muslim world. Similar fashion is the Pakistani, and that has nothing to do with Islam. Islam is a religion, and all religion call for the oneness of I think, God. I think Freedom of speech has nothing Dr. to do with it. seems to be raising that you have to dehyphenate. I think this is an important point that Dr. Awad is making, that you have to dehyphenate the actions and utterances of these two nations, Turkey and uh, and Pakistan with the rest of the Islamic nations. They're all protesting all right. And you've got some absolutely deplorable uh, comments made by the ex-Prime Minister of Malaysia, Mr. Mahathir Mohammed, uh, who seemed to suggest or justify violence, but then that tweet, tweet was taken down. But apart from that, every view from Islamic nations cannot be seen as the view of, uh, say, a Pakistan or a Turkey. Sunny Hundal wanted to come in very quickly and then I'll go to uh, Ms. Kumara Mangla. Yes, Mr. Hundal. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to say, look, I think it's obvious that each party in, or each country is doing this for their own domestic audience, right? So, Pakistan's Khan is doing this primarily to stand strong with his country. Uh, Erdogan in Turkey is doing this because his economy is falling apart and he needs to distract everyone. Macron is doing it because obviously the French people demand it, but also his popularity is not doing too point. well either. So there is a political layer to all this, which everyone seems to be missing in this debate around Islamofascism. And same thing in India. Mm. You know, it's fine for Modi to stand against and say we give support to what's happening in France. But like I said, no one in Europe is looking towards India as a model of religious tolerance towards minorities. That's simply not the case. So, hmm. you know... Okay. The point okay. I'm trying Many to make would say is that, that this is an assessment, yeah, you, uh, Mr. Hundal. Right. Yeah. Yes, please carry on. No, all I'm saying is that on one level there is a political debate going on here, which is less to do with Muslims and Islamofascism and more to do with the political priorities of each country. That, that's mostly it. Within that, you have people playing their own agenda. You've got Muslim uh, extremists who are using this for their own agenda. There are Hindu extremists on uh, social media who are using this for their own agenda. I think reducing this discussion to uh, some people and their comments on social media who may be associated with the Hindu faith uh, is perhaps a little uh, parochial of an understanding on an issue as wide and complicated as this. But Ms. Kumara Mangalam, let me now come and ask yeah. you a very important point. Uh, the fact that an unprecedented uh, support came in from New Delhi for Paris I can understand yes. that, uh, you know, there is a, a, a strong relationship uh, between France and, and, and a very strategic partnership between France and India. The Prime Minister has been there five times uh, during his tenure yes. as Prime Minister. Uh, commenting on terrorism also reiterates Modi's strong position against <coughs> terrorism. He has uh, mentioned this at the United Nations General Assembly also. But there is a larger yes. point, Ms. Kumara Mangalam, that is also being spoken about about this new proposed law in France. See, what does this law propose to do? It is premised on constitution above religion, which basically means that the French president is proposing one nation, one law, applicable to all faiths. In other words, in the Indian context, this sounds very, very similar to the Uniform Civil Code. Do you think yes. that this support from New Delhi has anything to do with this? Look, uh, Sanket, in any country, especially a democratic country, everybody has equal rights, which means they are in, in most ways equal before the law. In India, it's only certain groups which are allowed to have their own personal laws. Mm. Most other groups have got their laws have been codified, personal laws have been codified, etc. But I'm not going into that. That's a different debate for another day. What I want to say very clearly here is that ridiculing anybody's religion is wrong. It was done many years ago, if you remember, when M.F. Hussain, one of the most brilliant painters India has produced, 
modern painters India has produced had made that ridiculous painting of Saraswati with her pubic hair. At that time, nobody really protested when Hindus said it offends us. Now, every uh, religion has a right to say when you ridicule their prophet or their gods or, you know, uh, the the people, uh, the, those in their religion whom they hold dear and rever, they have relig- they have a right to protest. But you don't protest by spilling blood. That's what mm. I'm saying. Now, that has nothing to do with politics. Macron, like any, other, uh, like any other leader in any other democratic country, also has to play to his political uh, audience, like every, every uh, leader in every other country. And it's not just in democracies. Look at what China is doing and many other countries that are not democratic are doing. But here, what I'd like to say is that even if you say that one of the reasons why India may be or is supporting uh, France is not just because of the close defense and business ties, etc., but also because we believe that the common civil code is actually what will in many ways uphold democracy for every citizen of the country, regardless. I don't see what's wrong in that. Mm. I don't yeah, think yeah. Uh, New Delhi has thought of that while doing... No, no, while I'm not saying that there is anything time, wrong, Ms. Kumar Amagra. Because what's I'm happened not saying, in France but my is point horrific. Is, if, if, this is, if this is what it is, then it should be spelt out. You know how controversial the Uniform Civil Code issue is. Do you feel that by supporting France in this effort, uh, if France succeeds, then India can then present France as a template? I a don't template think India is looking that, that at anybody in has to world, give us a template. And then present that template in the Indian context. Sanket, I don't think India uh, is looking at anybody else to give us a template. We already have our own template. The timing of whether sure. or when the uh, common civil code will be brought in or not is a different question. Sure. That is for India to decide. I don't think it has anything to do with France or any third country sure. at all. I think that's uh, stretching it a bit thin. Uh, and uh, okay. politics in every country is different. Sure. Uh, you can't say that because four, two countries or three countries are democracies, that politics in all those countries are the same. Much like the gentleman who, when he sp- uh, who spoke before me said mm. that uh, what may be said by Turkey or Pakistan or even Mahathir in Malaysia does not represent the, uh, every Muslim in, in, I mean, Muslims all over the world. So there are differences from country to country. So I don't Correct. think uh, I, I think that's a very pragmatic point, Ms. Kumar that, Amangira, you know, that France is just like India. That, that we people are very of from all them. faiths have, have the right. We have supported them on this people issue. Of all, yes, Ms. Kumara Mangla. Yeah. Sure, Doctor Doctor Awad. See, I think that's an important just, point that is being made by Ms. Kumara Mangla that uh, people of all faiths. Yes, I, I'll quickly come back to you. One moment, Doctor Awad first. Dr. Awad, do you think that this is a point that needs to be understood, understood? And that's why I said at the very beginning that uh, polarized uh, opinions are not going to uh, help anyone particularly. The fact that we must agree. acknowledge I... that uh, this blind, blind freedom of expression is also not right. People must have their right to protest. But certainly they cannot justify acts of terrorism like spilling blood and slitting throats, Dr. Awad. Absolutely. I fully agree with Lalita totally that nobody should despise the other God you don't worship. This is written 2500 BC in Palmyra when they have stole that uh, statue and put it in the French Museum where we had our God is saying that don't despise the God you don't uh, uh, pray for him. So therefore, the respect of religion is different, uh, Sangeet. What mm. I'm trying to say here, if the French company in, uh, in 2005, Manili, have pulled out their shoes in, because they depicted the gods, uh, Hindu gods, is that is because, because there was a sentiment of the Hindu was hurt. Similarly, many of the people have pulled out all their products when it comes. It's hurting the sentiment of the people. That's nothing to do with the freedom of speech. And that only they have pulled. They have apologized. So I think Correct. that the, the European court have made it very clear there is a difference between despising the God or the belief of somebody okay. and the freedom of speech. We are for all for the freedom of speech. I am one of the vocal speaking okay. on this language. I do not even, I am very critical for all the Arab sure. leaders who have sent their people into my country to kill innocent people in the name of religion. They are all guilty of the first crime uh, murder. If only Dr. Awad was on the negotiating table, the world will be a better place. Thank you very much, Dr. Awad, Brahma Chelani, Lalita Kumar Manglam, Ambassador Gurjeet Singh and Sunny Hundal for joining us on this discussion. We are shop- uh, we're stopping for a short break right here on The Big Fight. When we come back, we speak to a senior Congress leader who's also served as the Minister of External Affairs, Mr. Salman Khurshid, 
on what he thinks about this change in strategy or the shifting gears as far as New Delhi is concerned in favor of Paris. What does this mean? What does he feel? Back in a bit. <laughs> 